Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today is Thursday, and like I used to say, we've got an exciting new update. Now, recently it's been a lot of bug fixes, but finally we've actually had some new features as well as the bug fixes, and it's extremely exciting. We've got hydrogen thrusters, we've got hydrogen tanks, we have new doors, batteries that have been reworked and we even got pet snakes so first off i'll start with the little snakes here now these roam the floor of your station eating small no i'm just joking that they're not pet snakes these are actually superconductors and they're an extra element that they've added in to produce jump drives and other advanced pieces of equipment so it's just another way of balancing out the game now behind them we actually have the hydrogen tanks and the hydrogen tanks work by taking ice so over here we've got an oxygen generator this produces both oxygen and hydrogen it'll siphon it off into the tanks and you can see it fills it up much like a battery and these this hydrogen at the moment can actually be used to power the rockets now i don't know if in the future it'll be used to power anything else but at the moment we've got these hydrogen fueled rockets and i'll actually stick one on top of the hydrogen tank to see how it works so pay attention that we've actually got the rocket actually lit and it's using the fuel from the tank below and over here since it's not connected up to any hydrogen it's just placed on the floor that the rocket is not actually firing oh look at that can we go all the way in it no we can't we're just stuck hovering above but still very cool now let's actually have a talk about the hydrogen tanks and oxygen bottles so if you're worried about maybe you'd actually put an oxygen tank in your inventory or hydrogen tank you don't want to do that that cause a bit of problems but this is the difference between the tanks we've got the new model for the hydrogen tank so we can actually fill up our smaller ships if you want to go out on an adventure or you're going to build a small landing craft and you don't want to fill all its interior up with oxygen producing components and then we've got the oxygen tank that we've seen there before now over to the batteries the batteries work a little bit differently now when you place a battery it has 30 percent charge within the cells but the balancing factor of this means that when you cut it and grind it back down, it turns to scrap metal, the actual cells that are in it. So if we grab ourselves a wood grinder for the component at the moment, and you can see we have the power cell. The power cell, when grounded down, will be a trade-off for that 30% of power. It will actually just be replaced with scrap metal. Now, what's really cool about this is they've changed it the way it works. Now, players really wanted to be able to recharge, charge, and use the battery as it was charging up as well. So, they've got this new semi-auto feature that we can actually tick here. So, this will allow the battery to be used as well as the battery to be recharged at the same time. So, that's a great new feature, especially for solar sail-based ships. It allowed to use the power as well as charge from the solar sail. Now let's actually have a look at these thrusters in a little bit more detail. Now the thrusters on the side, you can see we've got four little ports on the side of this large, well, large small thruster. We also have the large one in the background, so we can vent in. We don't have to directly use the port that's on the bottom. We've also got the smaller variant. Now the smaller variant only has a port on the bottom, and there's the small, small little thruster, and that's only got the port once on the bottom again. But still, you can find many ways of connecting these things up. So now that we've looked at the basics of the hydrogen system, what we're going to do is take a look at the new door. Now you can see the new door here takes up the whole of the block, and it has these beautiful little windows. It also slides open. It reminds me really much of a hospital sort of door. It doesn't just slide to the side, it also rotates and pulls to the back. We can actually walk inside here. We can open this other door as well. Really useful for airlocks, I can see these being. There's a lot of space. You can fit a lot of people in them, and you don't have a load of people jamming through a door. And that's definitely one of the reasons why they redid these. I can actually fly through here quite easily, not get stuck at all, and close it up behind me just really slim and it's just a beautiful door it to be honest though it, it kind of doesn't have the same feel as a number of the other blocks but at the same time it is a very nice addition and i'm glad they've added it but let's have a look at some of the ships with the hydrogen thrusters now to fit the hydrogen system into a smaller ship i found it quite time consuming it was quite tough to actually fit it in here as well so what i've actually got is a hydrogen tank in there then behind that we've got a connector and we've got the thruster block, oh we've got a large thruster on the back. We've also got the oxygen producer at the front. Now that's quite a lot to fit in a small fighter ship, so I don't think it's going to be ideal for fighters. It's going to be primarily, I think, used for ships that need to go and land on a planet. You can hear the thrust. Just look at the acceleration, I'll put the hood on and let's see how fast we can actually accelerate. Just look at that. That is quite a jerk of acceleration for a ship of this kind, so we'll slow down using the thrusters. They don't, they don't seem as maneuverable. Say, for instance, I turn to the left, the small thrusters have to account. Well, I guess you could account for that and build the ship a little bit differently. So let's actually hop out of that and we'll test the blue ship. Now, the hydrogen thrusters on the large ship just seem to have a maximum 
amount of acceleration you'll see this thrust to weight ratio is incredible so let's go zero to 104 in pretty much it's just done it there we go so we can actually accelerate back it's going to be perfect for getting away from that strong gravitational pull of a planet i can tell and let's actually fly back see if we can actually stop we can't stop because we're relying on that little thruster we'll use the other thruster to back us off and we'll just tap our way back now what i'm going to do now i think is some experimentation to see how much ice is required and how fast the hydrogen is used up by the actual thruster itself we'll, we'll test that out and we'll see exactly what we can do so we've actually entered back into survival mode now and we're going to test a few different things out now the first thing i want to test out is how long it actually takes to drain a full hydrogen tank so we're actually going to start this quite quickly we've actually got the time there uh, 2257 i'm going to guess it's going to take more than a minute or so we can actually see we've got an oxygen generator here and to rule out any problems of that feeding it oxygen as we go we're actually going to cut the pipe off even though that system is off so there we go it's cut off so that's not going to be feeding it any oxygen or hydrogen so let's actually fire that thruster so there we go the thruster is fired and it's already dropped down to what looks to be three bars and it doesn't seem to be using any excess power than the usual reactor. The base is using a bit of power, but it's not using the excess. So that means it's purely burning hydrogen and not using any sort of power to burn that rocket. But that's what would be kind of expected. So there we go. We've not passed too much time. We've not even passed a minute yet. We're down to three bars. Let's actually look into the menu and we can see how fast it's burned in there as well. So hydrogen tank. And you can see fill at 81%. And it's dropping. It's not dropping incredibly fast. It looks like it's dropping about a second every second or so. Well, but maybe about every two seconds we drop in a percentage. So this would last us a good few minutes by the look of it, maybe four or five minutes at full burn. And that's just with one thruster. Of course, if we increase the amount of thrusters, it'll decrease even less. So there we're down to two bars. So I've left it burning. We're going to empty this tank out before we actually restock it. We're down to one bar. Let's quickly check the menu to see how much percentage of hydrogen we have left. So we're down to 40% of hydrogen. And it's dropping still about that two, one second sort of interval. And it's not took too long. Let's actually have a look at the difference on the clock. So it's been about two to three minutes at the moment. So we should be in the five, four. There we go. The hydrogen rocket has just cut itself out and it's out of fuel. Very interesting. Now let's actually try refilling it through a pipe. So if we connect this up with a seven. So maybe we turn that off and we'll turn that one on to see if it refills. Okay. Actually it looks like we're getting some oxygen in there from the oxygen generator now. We've put the stockpile on to have the auto refill. And it is starting to build up very slowly though. So that amount of ice in there. Let's see how much we've got down. So in total we had 10,000 ice. And we're already down to 5,000 and it started to feed it into the tank. But it's not doing too much an impact. So it means we're going to have to have a lot of ice to build a lot of hydrogen by the look of it. Very interesting indeed. Um, let me just check the hydrogen tank again. Okay, we're only at 1.58%. Okay, so a lot of ice is going to be needed to fuel these rockets. So best of luck with that. Now moving on to this week's planetary teaser, that was not really showing too much except zooming out from the planet. Now it showed you how the trees slowly despawned away, but then the most interesting part as it sort of passed through the atmosphere was skipped. And this made me really wonder, how is the transition going to be between the atmosphere and the planet itself? You can notice the skip coming up here. There he goes, it transfers to there. But what is that transition gonna be like? How will you break into that planet's atmosphere? That'd be very interesting indeed. Anyway, I'll see you next time.